Good evening, you're watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. First, the headlines. With the royal blessings of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos, His Highness Sayyid Fahd bin Mahmoud Al Said presides over the opening ceremony of the House of Musical Arts. The Ministry of Interior issues a ministerial decision on the number of Wilayas representatives in Shura Council for the ninth term. The Capital Market Authority issues a license to establish first real estate investment fund. And the Ministry of Transport and Communications signs an agreement to establish four temporary fuel stations along Al Batna Express Highway. Those were the headlines, and now the news in detail. With royal blessings of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos, His Highness Sayyid Fahad bin Mahmoud Al Said, Deputy Prime Minister for the Council of Ministers and Chairman of the Higher Committee for the Royal Opera House Musket, patronized over the opening ceremony of the House of Musical Arts. More details in the following report by Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Rabay. With royal blessing of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos, the House of Musical Art was opened last night. His Highness uh, Sayyid Fahad bin Mahmoud Al Said, Deputy Prime Minister for the Council of Ministers and Chairman of Higher Committee for the Royal Opera House, upon arrival to the venue, His Highness unveiled the, the plaque marking the opening of the Muscat Art House. The national anthem was played. After which a musical performance took place on the House of Musical Arts in the presence of a number of officials, renowned figures from the Sultan and a number of countries alongside with heads of diplomatic missions accredited to the Sultanate. The music ceremony included a number of music performances from the Sultanate and the rest of the world. The Royal Oman Symphony Orchestra, Opera Singing Team and Hamasi Singing Team participated in the first part of the program with a number of performances of which some were from the Omani art heritage. The second part included performances from the global opera masterpieces by the Czech's National Symphony Orchestra with the participation of Nino Manchanzi, the Georgian operatic uh, soprano, and uh, Ramon Vargas, the Mexican operatic uh, tenor. The Royal House issued a statement and it read the following. The opening of the House of Musical Art is an important event as it contributes to implementing the vision and care for arts and culture by His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said. It's a new addition to the Royal Opera House Muscat, which was opened eight years ago to promote arts and enhance cultural dialogue with the countries that have rich art heritage in a bid to cement the art and culture cooperation with them.
It's worth mentioning that the establishment of the House of Musical Arts uh, came to achieve integration with what is provided by the Royal Opera House Muscat by focusing on the other cultural areas through the permanent cultural exhibition at which modern technologies are used besides the visiting exhibitions and cultural lectures that cast light on the development of arts through age and its connection with the diversity in this field that the world is witnessing in all epochs. His Excellency Sayyid Hamoud bin Faisal bin Saeed Al Busaidi, Minister of the Interior, issued a ministerial decision on the number of Wilayas representatives in Shura Council for the ninth term to be 86 by adding one more number in the Wilaya of Liwa. The decision is as follows. First, Wilayas which represent the Shura Council by two members are Mutrah Amrat Boucher, Asib Kuryat Salala, Bremi Nizwa Bahla Iski, Samail Sohar Shanas Liwa, Saham Al Khabura, Suwaik Rostak Barka, Musana Sur Jalan Bani Bu Ali, Jalan Bani Bu Hassan, Al Mudaybi, and Ibri. Second, the Wilayas represented by the numbers are Musket. Takka, Mirbat, Rakyut, Thamrait, Dalkut, Al Maziuna, Makshan, Shalem, and Al Halaniyat, Sada, Kasab, Dabba, Madha, Madeiba, Al Shanaina, Mana, Al Hamra, Adam, Bidbid, Al Awabi, Nahal, Wadi, Al Ma'awil, Al Kamil, and Al Wafi, Masira, Ibra, Bidia, Al Kabil, Wadi Ben Khalid, Dama, Wal Tayin, Yankul, Dunk, Hema, Mahout, and Al Dukum and Al Jazeer. Capital Market Authority issued the license to establish first real estate investment fund, Aman. This came within the initiatives of enhancing economy diversification, which resulted from Innovative Finance Laboratory. The equality capital of the fund estimated to 20 million Omani reals. 50% of them will be offered for public subscription in order to give opportunity for foreign investors to enter and activate real estate market. The fund and other real estate funds will provide different choices for investors, such as allowing individuals and companies to invest in the real estate sector, in addition to achieve partnership with citizens to benefit from promised opportunities for investment at real estate sector. The special task for UNIT showcased the practical application of the graduation of a new course of special operations which was held at the Wilaya of Suwaik. The event was presided over by His Excellency Lieutenant General Hassan bin Mohsen bin Salim al Shareki, Inspector General of Police and Customs. During the event, the participants showcased their field operation skills using weapons, self-defense capabilities as well as shooting targets. The parachute units also showcased their skills during the practical application of field operations. Still to come in our news bulletin. Matrah Fort stands a toll facing the sea and inhaling the winds that has fragrance of the past and present. Welcome back from the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. Rear Admiral Abdullah bin Khamis al Raisi, commander of the Royal Navy of Oman, received in his office at Muaskar al Murtafa 
Today, Rear Admiral Asif Khalik, commander of Karachi in the friendly Islamic Republic of Pakistan. The meeting exchanged cordial conversations and discussed viewpoints on several matters of naval fields between the two friendly countries. The Ministry of Transport and Communications has signed today a contract with Oman Oil Company to establish four temporary petrol stations along Al Batna Expressway. More details in the following report by Saleh bin Khalfan Al Rahbi. The Ministry of Transport and Communications and Oman Oil Marketing Company signed today a contract to set up four temporary petrol stations at Al Batna Expressway to be part of the truck weighing stations already constructed. The construction of the four temporary petrol stations complements the efforts made to serve the different road and vehicle users. The actual service stations, because it takes about six months, we decided to bring the fuel to the customers much faster. So we built those mobile service stations. We'll have four uh, on the Batna Express Highway, and uh, we will bring the fuel. Of course, we will bring the other services, in fact, also after. Even if it was not planned initially, we are bringing that because we know that the customers not only need, but they want it. So. A mobile service stations, the advantage versus uh, uh, complete service stations, it takes less than a month. Uh, otherwise, a service station takes six months. So there will be four of them, four Oman Oil Marketing mobile service stations on the Batna Express Highway within the coming 45 days. So you see the agility that we have, the speed that we have with our teams and working with the Ministry of Transport, of course, to ensure safety regarding that because it comes first for us. The sites selected for these stations are carefully chosen to be accessible to and from the highway and are distributed in several areas to serve the needs of road users along this route. The work of these stations will be around the clock and until the concerned parties complete and operate a number of permanent and integrated stations which will have many services to meet the highest and modern international standards. For the Sultanate of Amman Television, Saleh Makhalfan al Rahbi, Muscat. The Ministry of Health, in cooperation with Muscat Municipality and bodies concerned, continues its efforts to get rid of Addis Egypti mosquito. In this regard, the field works of Muscat campaign of Addis Egypti elimination started in the Wilaya of Boucher within the framework of continuing the campaign which started in the Wilaya of Asib last week. The campaign includes visiting public and private institutions for inspection and providing health and prevention awareness. Organized by the Ministry of Health in cooperation with Health Council of GCC countries, work sessions were held for awareness award. The work session clarified that the award will allow participation for all citizens of GCC countries and residents in Yemen through health awareness attritic works tracks, namely small photographic scene, motion graphic or professional photograph. The last date of submission, the work will be on the 10th of February 2019 and will be evaluated and choose winners through specialized jury in each track, in addition to specify three awards for winners of highest votes by audience. At cost of 7.5 million Omani rials, Higher Waters signed an agreement with Kandgut Transport and General Contracting to establish sewage, water and treatment networks and establishment of connections in the Boshar area in the Governorate of Muscat. During the project, 527 housing and commercial land and governmental premises and a number of commercial and vital buildings in the area will be connected with sewage and treated water networks. The length of the network is 23 kilometers and treated water network length around 6 kilometers. Higher water seeks to preserve human health and safety in addition to preserve underground water from pollution. The agreement was signed by His Excellency Engineer Mohsen bin Mohammed Al Sheikh, Chairman of Muscat Municipality, Chairman of the Board of Directors of Higher Water. 
The archaeology department in Sultan Qaboos University finished the exploration works in Al Gharin site in the Wilaya of Mudaybi in the governorate of Sharqiya. It was revealed that the two ancient civilizations dating back from 2000 to 3500 BC in the early Bronze Age lived in the area. The excavations showed that the residents of the area were dependent on the production of copper and its trading in their economy. Matra Fort is one of the historical monuments in the governorate of Muscat that continues to witness visitors from inside and outside the Sultanate. More details in the following report by Abdullah bin Ahmed al Rabay. Catch the sight and sound of Mathra city in the governorate of Muscat, a fascinating city of old and new on the seafront, a location of one of the largest seaports in the region whose harbor welcomes the world to witness a unique, rich history, heritage and culture that is well preserved. <laughs> Just a few meters away, an ancient Matra fort is seen rising out of the rock. This kind of forts have been playing a stronghold position that once guided the long shore line of the Sultanate. To get up the fort, here we can see visitors taking steps that wind up the side of the cliff edge all the way up until the center of attraction, where one would experience the fort's historical background and the majestic view. Matrah Fort is one of the historical monuments in the country that offer a glimpses of a wealthy Omani Arabian culture that have existed for centuries. Like many Omani forts scattered throughout the Sultanate, they all have distinctive engineering and architectural features that continues to be the center of attraction to the locals and tourists from other countries. I'm from Germany and I'm from London and we're just visiting this uh, wonderful town here. And today big good weather and it's very interesting to get the, uh, see this old fort. It's a very nice fort, very well located and we learned about how they made it by very simple means and how you can see the location, how it's very well protected by the mountains and the port. So in terms of strategical defense, we guess that it was a very, very interesting location at the time. During the school break, many students do make visits to such places to revitalize and strengthen their background on the history of their country. MashaAllah, Oman is an ancient country and has a great history. We are proud about it. We have many good examples such as this fort here and many throughout Oman. I like to visit this kind of forts in order to learn more. We have seen old cannons here and good architecture and good view here. Such historical sites have become a window into the memento past that helped build and create the diverse culture and traditions. Uh, I am an Omani. I'm originally from Matrah, but um, this is the first time that I came up here. It's amazing and you can learn a lot from here. I'm Tunisian. This fort tells us a lot about the history of Oman. I'm from Bahrain and I'm really uh, amazed with the view in this historical fort. The incredible natural beauty up here at this historical fort has much to offer young developing minds. This fort has good history. It is nice for all to learn. This uh, promising point came with relatives uh, to record his favorite national poem in Arabic. <laughs> Abdullah bin Ahmed al Rubai, Sultanate of Oman Television, Matrah.
Now for the international world, Ger Pedersen, the new UN Special Envoy for Syria, said today in Damascus that he had constructive meetings with government officials on his first visit to the Syrian capital. The veteran Norwegian diplomat took over from Stefan D. Mistura, who stepped down for more than four years of peace efforts that got nowhere. Syria has said it will cooperate with Patterson if he avoids the methods his predecessor and commits to Syria's territorial integrity. Nearly half a million people have been killed in the seven-year civil war in Syria and various UN-led peace efforts and indirect talks between the Syrian government and oppositions in Geneva have all ended in failure. Patterson has served the UN in various roles, including as special coordinator for Lebanon in 2007-2008. He was a member of Norway's team that negotiated the 1993 Oslo Accords, which resulted in mutual recognition between the Palestine Liberation Organization and Israel, and was Norway's representative to the Palestinian Authority between 1998 and 2003. The British lawmakers today began debating on a motion of no confidence in Prime Minister Theresa May's government. Opposition Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn called for a confidence a vote after the House of Commons overwhelmingly rejected May's Brexit deal with the European Union late yesterday. Opening the debate, Corbyn said the defeat was biggest in British history and called on the government to resign. May has refused to resign and was likely to win today's vote with a baking from Conservative Party and its Democratic Unionist Party allies. If she does will lose, however, the country would likely face a snap general election. This is the Sultanate of Oman television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. With the royal blessings of His Majesty Sultan Qaboos, His Highness Sayyid Fahad bin Mahmoud Al Said presides over the opening ceremony of the House of Musical Arts. With the Ministry of Interior issues a ministerial decision on the number of Wilayas representatives in Ashura Council for the ninth term. The Capital Market Authority issues a license to establish first real estate investment fund. And the Ministry of Transport and Communications signs an agreement to establish four temporary fuel filling stations along Albatna Express Highway. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the studios and the newsroom, it's good night.